I want to show you a workflow I use inside of Rome Research. Like the title suggests, this is about fleeting notes. So how I define fleeting notes are notes that have no immediate bigger purpose. Instead, the notes act as building blocks for future projects. Fleeting notes come from podcasts, documentaries, conversations, so on. And they're usually brief with varying subject matters. I frame notes as questions of which the answers connect to each other through matched linking. When these connections are made, I can identify the original questions posed to mold concrete ideas for future projects. And as I stated in a previous video about Rome, I am a firm believer in archiving ideas. I like to jot down ideas and sometimes get started on content when my energy and my creativity is high so that my future, maybe less energetic, less creative self has something to work with. This is kind of how I'm going about these fleeting notes as well. So this workflow, uh, what I essentially want to do is I want to be able to start in the program and I also want to end in the program. So it's sort of a circular loop of research. And what I'm going to do is use Rome 42 smart blocks to make this happen. So yeah, let's just get right into this. Here's kind of how it looks like. Let's start with uh, a question I had about what are important waterways for global trade. This was in response to the recent cargo ship uh, situation. Um, I labeled it hashtag place because it is a place I'm looking for. And I have the answer here, the source of where I got it from. And then I have the two major canals and just a little explanation of both of them. You can see that I have linked out years inside of these descriptions and sort of general places like Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea. In fact, if we go through the Red Sea, I'm pretty sure I have other answers that connect to this, like I actually have a place. So what I like to do is link as much as I possibly can. But basically just nouns, like person, place, and thing. This is an example of a very simple connection between two separate notes. Now I can also connect things like concepts together, like productivity or, or geography or time period, certain eras, certain people. And what I can do is go up to the references in here and see, oh, this was actually from a question I asked, which are what are the major cities in Saudi Arabia? And now I have this note and you can kind of just keep exploring and keep connecting through different notes. I also have this hashtag does maps and I can actually, I have a query up here already made. So let's put maps in here. And a lot of these actually, let's go back to this one. It's not necessarily a map, but it is a link to Google maps, which I actually in this video want to create a smart block that can kind of create this link automatically. I do have it in text expander, which is what I usually use. Like I said, Rome isn't really a place to have structured notes. You just kind of link things together randomly. There is no like rhyme or reason. At least that's how I approach it. You can also make connections through other questions within questions. So nested questions. Going back to what are important waterways for global trade, I have another question I have posed underneath this answer, which is, is there beef between these two canals? Um, and actually there kind of is. And then I asked a question that is, what is the story behind this third possible canal? And then from here, I have another question about the Chinese stock market crash from 2015 to 2016. And from there, I kind of stopped my rabbit hole. I can see where I stopped my rabbit hole here because I have hashtag empty and this question was not answered. Now I wanna give you sort of an idea of how I approach this from the ground up. How do I use Rome 42 smart blocks to help me ask a question, quickly get a search result, and then get the answer back inside of Rome and then go on to the next thing. So let's say I have this question. When was the last monarch of Hawaii? First thing I would do would be to highlight this actually. And then I'm gonna press JJ to bring up my Rome 42 smart blocks menu. So I'm gonna go down to search, or actually Google is what I have it labeled as. It's gonna uh, leave the cursor right here at Q equals. And I did highlight that question before I triggered this. So I'm just gonna go backslash dash PL. So what this is doing here is just a simple script and I am using text expander where I am replacing all the spaces in my clipboard with a dash. So it's HTML friendly and that's all I'm really doing here. And if I shift click, I can go see that in a browser. 
and I can see, I can look at, this seems to be the last queen, and she assumed the throne in 1891. The US military staged a coup to overthrow her in 1893, and Hawaii was annexed by the United States in 1898. So I guess that's the answer. And what I could do is just say 1898 and leave it at that, sort of hashtag it as a year. And I do shift click on that year and add the hashtag TL inside of years to add to a timeline, which I'll show you later. I could go further than this and sort of do one of two things. I already have a name here, this queen. Kind of want to know more about her. But one thing I could do is just kind of copy and paste this, sort of link this out. Maybe find out more about her. I'm just gonna copy this and I have another smart block command to give me a Wikipedia summary. Paste it in and there she is. So I go through it. If I wanna know a little bit more, maybe I go back to that page I was on and I make some highlights. And go to my Chrome extension called Rome Highlighter. I also don't know if there are other like competing extensions that kind of do the same thing. Let me know in the comments. I've just kind of been using this one. I go to Rome Highlighter button and I can go to settings. So what I have here is hashtag internet. I have the source, the URL, the date this was published, the date I accessed it, which is nice to find inside of my daily documents, everything I've saved for that day, and then the highlights below it. So let's say I just want to highlight this piece of information, show up as a highlight, copy one highlight. Hopefully my recording isn't cutting that off, but I'm just copying that highlight and I'm pasting it in. And of course I can go in here and start making some links. Like maybe I want to link out Honolulu or 1891, soon the throne in 1891. It'd be interesting to know. And yeah, that's pretty much all I need here. Go hashtag TL. Now let's look at that timeline now that I'm using it a lot. So inside of this query, I can change maps to just TL and I'll be able to see all the years I've used inside of my workspace. Now I have used Rome JS, which I do also have a link down below for that allows me to sort queries in Rome. Now I wish Rome had this sort of uh, natively inside of their default program, but they do not. So if you're trying to sort years, it's a bit difficult. So I have this little button here now because of that. And I can sort by page title. So it's giving me the year furthest away to the year most recent. And I can, you know, shift click on a year and go to its references and see every instance and every question posed that relates to this year. So let's take a look at the templates I'm using. Um, I have my daily templates, which I go over in another video. I can link that down below. I also have note taking templates. So this is what we're gonna look at. And again, this is with Room 42 Smart Blocks. This is where I'm getting that wiki extraction, but it is just essentially giving me the thumbnail if it exists from the Wikipedia page, the extraction of the summary and the link to the page itself. Down below that I have uh, something called ETYM. This is giving me a link to an etymology site where if I wanna find the etymology of a word, I can quickly go search for it. I have the source and then I have the link to the website with search question mark Q equals and then an input box, which I'm inserting within this HTML. And how I'm able to get that input smart command is by going JJ and just looking for input. If I do wanna go find the etymology of a word, I can go JJ etymology and an input box will show up for me. So let's say I wanna know the etymology of pirate, okay? Now I have that link there where I can go and find etymology very quickly of pirate. Now again, I can go to Rome highlighter extension, click on that and highlight this if I want, highlight anything from in here. I can highlight multiple things and go to copy these two highlights. Then I can paste them in. I could do the same thing with finding information about countries. I made another template for that. Let's say I want to know the general, what is the general history of Iraq? What I can do here is go JJ, find my template for finding country's histories, which is cohis. That input box will appear and I will put in Iraq. I'm going to go to that link 
and I should be able to see a little bit about Iraq. I also have a template for source. So this is just a random source. So if I'm not using Rome Highlighter, for instance, we can go to ask another question like, when did the Roman Empire fall? And let's say I just happened to do all of this manually and I found a website and I just want to quickly record the source I got this information from. I'm just gonna copy this URL and I'm gonna go JJ, go down to source, SRC. And what this is doing is it's actually taking my clipboard and pasting it into this link here. Now this template kind of looks like this. We have SRC where the link usually goes, I have a command called clipboard paste text. Now for Google, it's a little bit different. I did show you how this works, but I'll show you again. This is one I use very often, and I am using Text Expander with it. Um, I'm sure people who really know how to use these smart blocks can figure out how to replace spaces with dashes pretty easily with Java, but I'm not really uh, savvy with that stuff so much. I just have the cursor landing there so that I can apply my Text Expander shortcut instead. I also have a template for images. So you can just sort of right click and go copy link address, or sorry, copy image address, and just go right down to image. And it will give me that image for me. Actually, like I said before, I wanna create another template here that gives me the link to Google Maps. Because I do plan on using this often. I do have this shortcut in Text Expander, but it can be easily translated here. So I just want to show you how. Um, let's go with the G Maps as the menu name. Make it a link. Call it Map. We even do hashtag Map as well. Is it map or Maps? I believe it's Maps with input. So JJ. I'll look for input. Now the text I want to display um, within here is going to be city, comma, plus country. That's kind of how the URL is set up, where you type in the city, and if you want to type in the country associated, you go comma plus country, G maps, and say Paris, comma, plus France. I did not spell France correctly, of course, of course. Now, if I go to this link, it should lead me to a Google Maps of Paris, France, which it does. That is about it. Um, I'm usually very structured with my videos. So this kind of being a loosey sort of like workflow that isn't super structured was hard to explain, but hopefully I got what I could across and let's go right into the outro. That was my little workflow. By the way, I kind of go about this strategy with most programs that I encounter with note taking or productivity. I really try to keep inside of the program and not stray away too much. Try to keep the workflow contained in one place. Another thing I've been using actually is Zotero. And there is a way you can connect Zotero with Rome and Obsidian, actually. I explored both of those ways of connecting, and I think they're both really useful. I could do a video on either one, honestly. Um, so if you want me to do that, I can. Now, how can you go and download the things I used? All of the links directly to the copy and paste code will be down below. There'll be, I'll try to make sure there's not a whole lot of navigating you have to do, especially if you're sort of mid to low tech like myself um, and don't know how to navigate things like GitHub. So I will provide that down below. I will see you guys next week and the rest of the week on Twitter and I'll see you guys next time.